The Danton class occupy a somewhat unique position of being both some of the best and some of the worst warships ever built at the same time. Why is this? Well, the answer's complex, but basically it comes down to timing. The Danton class were one of the few classes of French battleship where the urge to tinker was almost entirely suppressed. They were designed in 1905 as part of the French response to the growing size and power of the German navy. Along with the British Lord Nelson class and the Japanese Satsuma class, they represented the pinnacle of pre-dreadnought battleship technology, and also showed a clear progression from the more traditional pre-dreadnought layout towards the all-big-gun armament of true dreadnoughts. They actually displaced more than the American South Carolina and the Spanish Espana class dreadnoughts, and they almost outmassed the dreadnought herself. But for all that, thanks to constant redesigns and delays in the shipyards, they didn't actually come into service until second generation dreadnoughts and first generation super dreadnoughts were also coming into service in other navies, and so they were hilariously outmatched right from the start of their careers. At the time of their design, based on the French interpretation of the Battle of Tsushima, they concluded that medium calibre firepower had been the deciding factor, and so they decided to upgrade the new ship's secondary batteries from the 7.6-inch gun used in the previous class to a 9.4-inch weapon. As a result, the ships would be armed with a pair of twin 12-inch turrets, one at each end, no less than 12 9.4-inch guns in six twin turrets with three per side, plus 16 single 75mm guns and 10 single 47mm cannon. A pair of torpedo tubes completed the armament. Due to a slightly thinner than average 9.8 inch belt, they were capable of 19 knots, which was slightly faster than average for a pre-dreadnought. At one point there was serious thought given to replacing the 9.4 inch guns with single 12 inch weapons, which would have made it a somewhat odd dreadnought with a 7 gun broadside. At first, the ships were going to use the old triple expansion engine design, but having decided that for the moment tinkering with individual ships was off the table, the French ministers instead tinkered with the entire class, deciding to switch to the newer turbine engine and a bigger and more powerful version of the 12-inch gun. You might think this was a good idea, and in principle you'd be correct, but the French decided to do this after the ships were already under construction. This, along with over 500 other design changes, mostly again taken during construction, vastly delayed the ship's entry into service, as builders sometimes found themselves having to rip out entire completed sections to incorporate whatever new bright idea someone had managed to get approved. Other issues included water in the lower end of a dockyard slipway, meaning that Danton's stern wasn't started until four months after the front of the ship, and a late-running armoured cruiser taking up a berth intended for one of the other ships' construction. Eventually, the ships filtered into the fleet during 1911, the six vessels being the Danton, the Condorcet, the Diderot, the Mirabeau, the Vernion, I think, and the Voltaire. They were assigned to the Mediterranean, and they took part in fleet manoeuvres there during 1913. During the First World War, the ships started out escorting French troop convoys from North Africa to France, with some of the ships helping in the abortive hunt for the battlecruiser Goban. Their sole battle action came later in 1914 at the Battle of Antivari, where every ship of the class, except Mirabeau, along with a pair of Corbet-class dreadnoughts, five other French pre-dreadnoughts, a pair of French armoured cruisers, a pair of British armoured cruisers, a French protected cruiser, five French and three British destroyer divisions, all faced off against a battle force of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. The mighty fleet that faced them consisted of a single light cruiser and one destroyer. The Austro-Hungarian cruiser then sailed straight at the Allied fleet to distract them long enough for the destroyer to escape. This actually worked, although the light cruiser's guns were so hopelessly outranged by the French main and secondary batteries that they managed to sink the ship before it was even able to get off a single shot of its own. Danton herself would later be sunk by a German submarine whilst returning to blockade duty in 1917, although it sank slowly enough that the majority of the crew were saved. Three of the surviving ships would then take part in the occupation of Constantinople at the end of the war. From there, Vernion and Mirabeau were sent to the Black Sea to support the white Russian forces against the communists. The crew of the Vernion mutinied when a crew member was killed protesting against these orders, whilst Mirabeau ran aground and had to be stripped of some of her armour and guns to get her afloat again. 
This caused the withdrawal of French ships from the operation, and the two ships were sold for scrap in the mid-1920s. Voltaire and Diderot were made training ships before they were also scrapped in the mid-1930s, and Condorcet was also made into a training ship, followed by being turned into a store ship, and was then captured intact at Toulon in 1942 by the Germans, who turned it into a barrack ship. She would then later be scuttled, then refloated and scrapped in 1944. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.